Before I begin the commentary, I just want to make it clear that in this video, the different points I'm going to be talking about on what I think can make Modern Warfare 3 a great game, they will not include things like removing skill-based matchmaking and adding in the classic prestige system, for example, because for one, skill-based matchmaking is not going anywhere, no matter how much backlash we push on it, it's not going to change, and that's unfortunate. And going to the prestige system, for whatever reason, these Call of Duty developers just will not give us a classic prestige system, I don't know why and I highly doubt that we're going to be seeing it here within the full game because otherwise you would think Sledgehammer Games would use the classic prestige system in their marketing to help get pre-order sales up and they haven't done that so I just don't see those two things just happening at all whatsoever and so the four different points I'm bringing up in this video are pretty reasonable in my opinion and things that I think Sledgehammer Games can execute when Modern Warfare 3 launches and even with the post-launch seasons and so I just want to get that out of the way in this video and with that being said I'll let the rest of the video continue. Hey guys this is Spartacus here and welcome back to another video. In less than two weeks Modern Warfare 3 will be released and of course if you digitally pre-order the game you'll have early access to the campaign so for those of you who did that you can get the campaign out of the way and then wait until November 10th when multiplayer and zombies is released. Now I did not make a video talking about the Modern Warfare 3 beta after it ended. I didn't give off a review. I didn't really provide any feedback after the beta ended. I kind of just been sitting here collecting my thoughts and thinking on what kind of video I should actually make discussing Modern Warfare 3 before it actually releases on November 10th. And to be honest with you, another reason why I never made a video kind of giving a proper beta review is because pretty much everything I'm going to be saying in that video has already been said by plenty of content creators out there throughout the Call of Duty community. And so I guess this video can almost be that replacement for that beta review because I do want to discuss Modern Warfare 3 and I really want to talk about how this game can actually be good and I think there's a few different things a few like at least four key things that I think could really make Modern Warfare 3 a great game at launch and how it can be great even throughout the post-launch content season that we see in the future. So let's go ahead and start with my major concern because this is almost a make it or break it concern for me when it comes to Modern Warfare 3 and that is the spawn system. The spawn system, I am actually shocked how bad it actually was in the beta. I And I know Sledgehammer Games is aware of this. They have a Trello board that you can actually view for yourself so it shows all the different things that they're looking into or that they've completed and fixed already and they did mention that they are looking into the spawns and adjusting some the type of spawns that they see on the map to make them more balanced. Uh, I really want them to investigate further into this. This is I think a pretty big issue in the game so a lot of you who actually have played the Modern Warfare 3 beta you may have noticed that you may have been spawn flipping too many times when you're playing objective game modes like Domination and you might have noticed that you'll spawn in areas where it'll place you in front of an an enemy who's about to come around the corner and they're able to, able to take you out pretty easily because your back's turned to them and you don't realize that it spawns you next to an enemy, right? And that happens quite frequently. Or maybe it'll spawn you near an enemy and they're in front of you, but it's like it could just completely catches you off guard because you don't expect it to be an enemy that close to you, right? And so I think another thing about the spawn system, which really I think shows how bad it actually is, is the fact that matches just seemed way too close. Sure, people People want to blame skill-based matchmaking, which of course is part of the issue as well, but I think because of how close matches were, like literally winning or losing a domination game by one point multiple times throughout the beta, I mean, that does not happen very often in Call of Duty. I don't know about you guys, but when I play domination in Call of Duty, I do not win or lose by one point that often, but it happened quite frequently in the Modern Warfare 3 beta. Sure, yes, skill-based matchmaking is part of the problem, but how I noticed it, especially on the map of state it felt like they were spawning you at enemy flags like way too frequently even when enemies were near those locations as well that didn't seem like there was a set spawn point for both teams and people were just flipping them to i don't know i don't know what the issue is with that i just think they really need to investigate the spawns further because i think this is really what's going to make or break modern warfare 3 for me personally and another thing that's also a huge issue that i'm very concerned about when this game comes out is hit detection 
And I don't know about you guys, but I know there was one weapon throughout the beta. I don't know if it was a battle rifle or marksman rifle. I, I'm not sure what weapon it was exactly, but I know there was a gun in the beta that just would not get any hit markers. Like it was just absolutely abysmal. It had like a huge hit detection issue every time you tried shooting at an enemy. I literally saw a clip of somebody spraying this gun into an AFK person and they weren't getting a single hit marker, but eventually they did end up fixing it in the beta. So if you're someone who used the gun, I think you realize how good it actually is because I've heard the gun actually slaps quite a bit. But either way, this isn't the only gun that's having hit detection issues. My very first game on, and I wish I saved this footage for you guys, but I was point blank of an enemy with a shotgun, keep in mind, and I hip fired him twice, point blank. And it was, t my crosshairs were totally on the enemy and I didn't get a single hit marker. Like I can understand if my pellets grazed him and you know, I get a hit marker, I don't get the kill, but I didn't even get a hit marker for two shots in a row and I lost the gunfight and I was just absolutely baffled that I didn't get any hit markers. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, maybe you were lagging, maybe it was the packet burst. Oh no, definitely had no lag or packet burst involved in that situation. So hit detection is also a pretty big concern of mine as well. And I've never seen a Call of Duty game have this bad of hit detection issues. And people might be like, oh, it's just a beta. Well, I don't give a shit if it's just a beta. It might be there in the full game. So I have to bring it up, right? And so I really do hope the hit detection gets fixed ASAP on all the weapons and I hope we don't see issues with that when it comes to the carry over weapons or the carry forward weapons is that how they say it? carry forward uh, from Modern Warfare 2 trans going into Modern Warfare 3 because we're getting a lot of weapons at launch. You gotta remember, there was gonna be a bunch of weapons at launch for this game. And having all those Modern Warfare 2 weapons there, and of course, all the Modern Warfare 3 weapons on top of that. So, yeah, I'm concerned about the hit detection issues. I hope they uh, get that figured out. And that's one thing I actually give Infinity Ward props for. I know they've been getting a lot of shit lately, but Infinity Ward has always done a great job when it comes to hit detection and the hit boxes on the operators themselves. They've always done a fantastic job with that. And so I hope Sledgehammer Games can take a note from Infinity Ward's book when it comes in that area. Another thing that needs to happen with Modern Warfare 3 in order for it to be a good game is the post-launch content. Give us a good amount of post-launch content for multiplayer specifically because I think there is a lot, actually I don't even think I know, there is a huge community out there who wants to play multiplayer in Call of Duty that don't want to play Warzone, right? Because a lot of the older school Call of Duty players like myself, I don't even know if I consider myself old school. I literally started playing since the original Modern Warfare 3, which is crazy to even say right now, but the people love to play multiplayer and you got to give us good seasonal content because it just seems like it's been so lackluster ever since Warzone became a thing and it sucks. It really does suck. And as a multiplayer fan, I just feel like we just been get, we're just like a last resort or something for Call of Duty. Or I don't know what the deal is with that. Now, I will say during the COD Next event, when we saw some interviews going on with the Sledgehammer Games developers and they were asking them questions about the game, I do believe one of the developers did say that they plan on launching 12 original maps. So when I say 12 original, I mean brand new maps that we haven't seen before come into the post-launch seasons, right? And that pretty much means if we're going to get like six seasons within Modern Warfare 3, then that's at least two original maps per season, which I am totally okay with. However, the way they need to handle it is give us those two original maps at the start of the season, right? Because I think we can all agree that when a new season starts in Call of Duty, that's when it's like almost at its peak, right? Because we have a new battle pass of items to grind for, we have the new maps to play on, the new weapons, you name it, right? And so give us those those new original maps at the start of the season and then give us remake maps during a mid-season update because really they don't add too much to like the game when it comes to the season reloaded or the mid-season updates and so if they just give us a remake map I think that's good enough for me personally and I think that's totally acceptable uh, so just give us some sort of content that's decent amount to grind for and that keeps us engaged until the next season comes around and then you just keep repeating that process and I really hope that is something they can pull off because we haven't really been able to see that since Warzone has pretty much existed. So yeah, that is my personal opinion about post-launch content. And then the last thing I want to bring up in this video, and this has been said plenty of times, and I know everybody can agree with me on this, is keep up with the communication with the Call of Duty community. They've done 
done a fantastic job with the beta and providing feedback and they're, they're, they show that they're listening, right? Just show us that you're listening, that you hear what kind of feedback we're providing and what you're looking into. Don't be like Infinity Ward where you are like hearing what we have to say, but you're not actually listening to us and you're not actually going to reflect that back in game because you're too stubborn to make any changes, right? Well, of course, we all know that Sledgehammer Games has had a good start when it comes to this communication, and I hope that we see this continue after the game is out, and especially after the new year, because I know a lot of people were pretty upset how everybody went on vacation during the holiday season, and we had our pretty broken game, which was Call of Duty Vanguard, and I, we don't want a situation like that again. I'm sure they've learned their mistake back then. I don't expect it to happen again, but I guess I'm just keeping my fingers crossed because, you know, it's Call of Duty after all. Anything could happen, so just really keep up with the communication, especially after the new year, really show that you care. Like, we want to sh see that you actually care about us and provide the feedback in-game or reflect it in-game from what we are providing. So, I mean, I don't know. I just can go on forever about the communication, I feel like, just because we just definitely did not get any of it from Infinity Ward, and honestly, I don't think Treyarch really gave us as much communication as they probably could have during the Black Ops Cold War year. So, that's just my personal opinion. Sledgehammer Games has usually always been the best developer when it comes to communication, but they got just got to be consistent. You got to be consistent with it, and that's really all I'm asking for. So, that's it, you guys. Those are pretty much the four main points that I think can make Modern Warfare 3 a great game. Fix the spawn system, fix the hit detection issues, uh, give us a good amount of content uh, post-launch, right? So throughout all the seasons, give us something that's good. Just because they're giving us a lot doesn't mean it's necessarily good. As long as it's high-quality content, that's really all I'm asking for, for the most part. And then, of course, the fourth point being keeping up with the communication. So yeah, that's pretty much everything for I want to say in this video. I've gone on long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are brand new. And of course, comment down below what do you guys think needs to happen in Modern Warfare 3 in order to, to be a good Call of Duty game because Call of Duty is such a weird spot right now where people, of course, are going to buy it every single year, but I think people are just absolutely fed up with what we've been getting and that really was reflected what, what we saw in Modern Warfare 2 just this past year. So yeah, hopefully things can turn around with Modern Warfare 3. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but make sure you subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, comment your thoughts down below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, to stay up to date with me outside of YouTube and I shall catch you guys later.